Hi friends, welcome to another video on Tutorials Point with me Racha. And today in this aviation module segment, we will talk about crew resource management, which is also known as CRM. Well, let's make us understand ourselves that there are two types of crew in the flight, which is there on board the flight. One is the cabin crew and the set of team of cabin crew. And the other is the flight deck crew, which comprises of the pilot and the co-pilot. There has to be complete synergy and good communication between all set of crew, whether it is a cabin crew or it is a flight deck crew. And today in this module, we will understand why CRM plays a very essential role. So let's get started. Well, on the agenda today, we'll talk about human factors that can cause accidents, critical success factors and the elements for a successful flight, concepts and tools of air crew coordination training, which is the CRM or the ACT. And that's what we're going to cover in today's module. Well, friends, you are going to also be exposed to certain facts and certain you know, things that can really put you a little bit at unease because you're going to be shown certain facts that can really be mind boggling. What is crew resource management or CRM? Let's understand that. So CRM or cockpit resource management is a set of training procedures for use in environments where human error can have a devastating effect. Now that devastating effect can also cause accidents in the flight. Used primarily for improving air safety, CRM focuses on interpersonal communication, leadership and decision making inside the cockpit. So well, that's what we're going to understand on CRM. The goals of CRM are three essential attributes, which is knowledge, skills and attitude. Well, the air crew, whether it is the cabin crew or the flight deck crew needs to have complete knowledge about each and everything in the aircraft. Whether it is a normal situation or an abnormal situation, they need to be knowledgeable about each and everything and how to handle that. Skills, they need to have good communication skills, they need to have good leadership skills as well. The attitude of the crew needs to be very positive. You might be faced with situations which are negative, but you need to still keep yourself positive, having a positive attitude. Well, that's something devastating to even know that 80% of the accident in the flight happens because of air crew error and it could be the mistake of the flight deck crew or even the cabin crew member. Whereas 20% of accidents happen because of weather changes or weather forecast, equipments, maintenance, airport which is ATC air traffic controller as well as certain other miscellaneous factors. So my friends, if 80% of the errors in the flight are caused because of crew it is very essential and imperative to understand that crew plays a very, very major role in the entire segment of aviation. Well, to throw some highlight on what are the other causes which can lead to certain accidents in the aircraft, the flight crew astonishingly has 493 number of accidents which has happened because of flight crew miscommunication between them. The airplane, meaning you know the outer part of the airplane as well as the inside, has caused 124 accidents. These, my dear friends, is known in the period from 59 to 1990. Maintenance, because of maintenance issues, 21 number of accidents have been caused. Weather has led to 34, you know, number of accidents. ATC has led to 37 and other miscellaneous has led to 47 number of accidents between the year 1959 and 1990. Well, typical aircrew errors, what are some of the errors which can be caused by the aircrew? Loss of situational awareness. Loss of situational awareness could be something like not being able to judge properly or not being able to understand the situation properly because of which it leads to human errors. Poor judgment or poor decision making, understanding of how to take a decision or being quick in decision making can lead to this. Preoccupation with minor technical problems. So that can also be a cause of an error. And inadequate leadership. A lot of times people don't know how to be good leaders. A flight crew, for example, a pilot may not be able to designate or delegate authority to his co-pilot. And it can be the same for cabin crew member also. So you need to not take all the work on yourself. It's important and imperative that you distribute work evenly so that you also have some breathing space. 
Well, typical airline or rather aircrew errors are having this particular cycle and this is important to understand that you need to have good planning for every flight you need to have a plan of action and basis on that you need to take up each and every challenge which might come your way waiting for the response from the flight crew side you need to constantly talk and communicate with your fellow crew members to understand whether they are alert or not so keep getting responses so this cycle has to be followed for each and every flight that you take each and every day certain positive flight crew characteristics which are there for each and every cabin crew member they are in control of people and events or rather they appear to be so when you look at a flight crew when you look at a cabin attendant they look very sure of themselves and they look very positive and in command of the situation or rather appear to be they have inbuilt calculated emotional distance as a cabin crew member you cannot get very emotional so you need to have a lot of diplomacy and tactfulness also and not able to emotionally distance yourself mission oriented compartmentalizers so they are they work on a mission and they've compartmentalized themselves accordingly they have a systematic methodological and predictable way of working so everything works according to a process everything works according to a particular plan of action and that's positive characteristics of cabin crew member now let's look at the negative characteristics well some of the negative characteristics are they're not very spontaneous means they're not very quick at decision making or very quick with understanding what the situation demands of them they can and do become complacent as we get better what happens friends is once you start flying as a cabin crew member after a couple of years you become so stagnated and you become very very lethargic and lax about a lot of things and you feel that i know it all so that is the time when you become very complacent and that can work against you at times they do meaningless rituals which is a trap so they keep doing rituals which they themselves do not know why they are doing it and it is a trapful situation for them need positive feedback all the time they need something positive to be given to them and if a negative feedback comes to them they are not very confident about taking it in the right spirit so they always need positive feedback Well, dear friends, now we're going to talk about crew incapacitation. What is the meaning of incapacitation? Incapacitation means trying to not be as what is expected out of you. Incapacitation also means when you have sickness or when you are not in your full senses. Now, there are two types of incapacitation. One is obvious and one is subtle. The obvious incapacitation is obvious because you can see it. The person in front of you, rather the flight captain or the co-pilot could be showing very obvious signs of not being physically as well as mentally emotional in a emotional state of mind so you can look at them and they might be vomiting or they might be not feeling good or they might be having a headache etc and you can see it happening in front of you well the subtle incapacitation is a little hard to miss because um they don't show these signs it's not physical so what you might want to do in subtle incapacitation is you might want to check with the you know the pilot by asking him certain questions and if he's answering well and good if he's not answering those questions you need to make sure that you know that that particular captain is not undergoing subtle incapacitation a captain might be feeling sick because of the food he has just eaten or he might be stressed or distracted or not in the correct frame of mind if the pilot of the aircraft is not well it can lead to a disaster it can lead to the aircraft crashing or making any kind of errors which can happen hence it's very important to take care of subtle incapacitation just for the simple fact that it's hard to recognize well certain conflict resolution techniques certain destructive techniques are they apologize a lot so there's a lot of premature apologizing saying sorry a lot of times they refuse to take the flight seriously so they are looking at a flight in a very fun aspect not really understanding that they're passengers on board and it is their responsibility to make sure that they're safe and secure they withdraw evade or even they walk out of the cabin you know of the cockpit they'll just come out and walk out without really realizing how important it is they use intimate knowledge they bring in unrelated issues anything which is not related to the flight anything not related to the crew they bring about these subjects which are not which are probably nonsense topics and are not related to the flight 
they make hollow promises they attack indirectly could be in the way of verbal communication attacking in that sense they demand more and more and more they have store hurts and they use belittling humor even the jokes that they crack or the humor is not very positive can be taken in a negative way by the people in front of them well let's look at certain constructive patterns these are things that you will see which is constructive in a pilot they program time to time discuss issues so any time there is a discussion required they will go ahead and discuss they give expression to feelings so it's very important for a pilot or for even a cabin crew to express themselves talk about you know whatever is bothering them because that will really help you to release or relax yourself they reply to other person's feeling define issues clearly they discover where positions agree they discover points of vulnerability they determine the depth of feeling and it's a good issue to talk about things they offer self corrections whenever you correct these people they take the constructions uh, rather the corrections in a very positive manner they recognize spontaneous humor caring etc so these kind of constructive patterns are good to see in a flight crew or a cabin crew the moment you do not see these that means they are not really confident about themselves and there's something bothering them and you need to find out what so friends we are now going to talk about workload performance let's understand that the workload of a flight attendant is directly proportional to the kind of errors which might happen inside the flight so uh, we are going to talk about three kinds of workload one is underload one is optimum workload and the third one is overload well uh, let's understand these three and how it's important for a flight crew or a cockpit crew to be under which particular category so underload is uh, when there is increased activity because there's less of work for the flight crew so that leads into boredom fatigue frustration and dissatisfaction because there's not much work given to them or assigned to them so they're not really that uh, effective with their work probably optimum workload is the right place for a pilot or a co-pilot or even a flight attendant to be in because this is the place wherein you have the correct amount of workload given to you you're not overstressed because of too much of work and you're not under stress because of lack of work so certain things which are here happening are people are creative people are rational so they have a rational way of thinking they're good at problem solving and they also progress change and they're really satisfied with their work so this is a good area for the pilots and co-pilots to be in because they are, have optimum workload the third area is overload this can be a disastrous place to be in because here the captain is really overloaded with the work or the flight attendant is really overloaded with too many things to do and because of which they are not really able to prioritize and delegate as well as expand the time because of which they have a lack of judgment they do not really delegate their work properly they are irrational they can make some major mistakes because they are so stressed out they are not good at problem solving they are constantly exhausted at work they can also have a lot of illnesses and a lack of or rather a low self esteem might say to themselves that i am not good at so and so thing so that's the reason friends it's important for a crew in order to prevent any kind of errors they need to be in optimum workload area coming to the next thing that we will discuss is distraction and stress well we friends we might feel that a cabin crew's job is all glamorous and you know they go so many places and they have such a nice work life not really at times because there's a lot of distractions as well as stress factors in a cabin crew life as well you're flying really un you know a, a routine which is not really predictable and it could lead to lack of sleep anxiety and all of these illnesses can come your way so frequent causes for a failing or rather a failing aviator it could be a pilot or even a flight attendant certain causes are marital problems they might be having some or the other problems in their marriage could be divorce recently divorced and because of which they it is causing them a lot of stress relationship difficulties they could be a part of some difficulty in relationships major career or major decisions changes in their lifestyles trouble with the superiors or the peer members of where they are working meaning the crew 
and they could have got recently engaged which could make them uh, you know not really uh, at ease with things so these are certain causes because of which they are probably could be stressed and distracted at workplace when a crew is distracted it is not good because it can lead to errors so what do we have to offer them there is a checklist that they need to undergo and this is something before every flight you need to have a checklist of i'm safe now what does this i'm safe stands for i stand for illness a crew needs to ask themselves do i am i ill in any particular way or do i have any symptoms do i have a headache or am i having a tummy upset or anything like that medication have i taken any prescription or over the counter drugs any kind of medication that i'm addicted to any painkillers i have taken recently for example all this can create a havoc in your way of thinking s stands for stress am i under any kind of stress could be worried about my job am i worried about my health am i worried about my family am i worried about my finances am i worried about my career so any kind of stress that i'm into a stands for alcohol have i consumed alcohol within the next couple of you know prior to my flight have i consumed alcohol which can be disastrous because it works in your or rather it comes in the way of your thinking fatigue stands for f is fatigue is am i tired am i not adequately rested have i not slept well before a flight if you have not slept before a flight properly having your 6 or 8 hours of sleep it can again play a lot of havoc with the way of your decision making E stands for emotion means am i emotionally upset am i in my correct emotions do i have charge of my emotions or have the emotions got better of me well each and every flight crew needs to have this particular checklist of i'm safe before each and every flight so as to know that she is in full control of herself certain available resources for a cabin crew member to have crm is people equipment and information that can contribute to a successful flight and prevention of an error during a flight so you have your different resources and how do you make optimum utilization of these resources is something which is there only in the hand of a cabin crew member certain internal resources are the pilot the co-pilot the crew and the equipment knowledge for that particular flight you have your pilot your co-pilot as well as your equipment of that flight which is your internal resources coming to external resources could be other pilots of other flights atc which is your air traffic controller technical reps and maintenance people as well as time these are your external resources which can help you get uh, the better of you rather in terms of being able to concentrate on your work friends it's very important that synergy has to be there for a flight to take off and land with all its passengers safe and sound all the crew member have to have complete synergy with each other they need to have good communication because if there are communication mishaps it can lead to a flight accident which can endanger the lives of so many passengers could be 200 300 400 passengers everybody's life is in your hands as a flight attendant or a pilot and hence the combined action of separate resources has a greater total effect than a sum of their individual effects when they are assimilated by a flight crew having a safe flight is not the guarantee of one single flight crew it is everybody coming in together by having good synergy Well friends that brings us to the end of yet another interesting module of CRM which is crew resource management we sincerely hope you have enjoyed listening to this particular module on CRM and understanding the importance of CRM to have a safe flight keep watching more videos coming your way thank you very much for listening to us